It's not. It's not an art block. It's not an art. Wait, is art block? It's more like an art clog. You're all clogged up. What happens when you get clogged up and you gotta like clear it out? You just blow it out. <laughs> so you just explode with art. Like you get a really big canvas or like a really a lot of paper and you just blah, just explode all the art you can out of you. All the shitty stuff, all the good stuff, just squiggles, squirrels, swirls, like all the stuff. You know, like don't even don't even think about it. Just art as much as you can. Put paint on shit and just explode in art and then it'll clear out the the blockage. And then you'll be like, Oh, I got it. Now I got it. You have to blow it out though. Blow it out of your face all. <laughs> That's what you, don't you, are you art blocked? <laughs> you need to you need to deconstipate yourself. You need to de, you're constipated. You got an art constipation? Art constipation? You need to like you need to like a like a what do they do? An enema or something or a, uh, like a cleanse. You need, it's like a constipate. You're blocked up. You need a cleanse. You need like prune juice for the art stuff. What's what's an artist prune juice? We you got you got to like you gotta like clean out all the gunk oh you need to go on a trip that's what you need to do you need to like take a little trip get outside your box go somewhere or like literally take a trip you know like trip out or something that's that'll clear it out just you gotta like split open and melt an art enema what is an art enema what does that look like (laughs) I need an art enema. It's almost like cleansing your palate of all the other art you've seen. Like, how do you cleanse your art palate? How, like, you know, like your mental, a mental palate. I guess meditation, maybe, or something where you, where you. How, what what does it for you? What clears out your brain? Or what clears out all the thoughts of, like all the art thoughts? Like, how do you squeegee that shit? What do you do? You gotta like. It's drugs, huh? Yeah, it takes to do something. It's, it's either drugs, or fasting, or meditation, or like a vacation, or like something outside of what you normally do. They say if you want a different outcome, you have to do different things. So you need an art enema. Blow it out your art enema. I don't know. I don't know. What do you, what, how do you, how do you clear those channels? <laughs> an art fart. You need like an art fart and a big art shart comes out and you like gotta clear it out. Take a few, take a new class, a new tutorial. Oh, maybe new media. Oh, I'm new media. Or, you know, like maybe, maybe, uh, well, like what I like to do is just pick up another thing. I pick up my guitar and I miss it. I have to miss it, you know? Like sometimes I have to miss it. I think it's good to have another thing that you do because when you miss the thing that you like, the creative thing you like doing, you're like, oh yeah, I want to do that again. I miss it. Sometimes I'll be looking at other people doing art or or I'll see something new by somebody and I'm like, oh shit. I need the art. When you find out, let me know. <laughs> yeah, or like, or like, I don't know. That lately, that's what it is. When I see somebody else's stuff, and I'm like, oh man, I need to get to work. I need to. It doesn't seem to it last very long. <laughs> I have to like keep looking at their stuff. I get ideas and then I sit on them and then I'm like, oh, I think I'm gonna change that. That's true. Doesn't it? Doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be the same thing. I don't know. I think. I think we do it to ourselves. You know what I mean? Like I think we do the art block thing to ourselves to like push ourselves into reinventing our style. Like we're so bored with what we already have done that we have we create these hurdles to get over. Like because it's we we're not really blocked. There's not really a lack of ideas. That's like all in your head. Like, it's the motivation. 
You know, it's not, there's no lack of any ideas. It's your motivation just doing it, you know. So, you know, like, if as long as you could just figure out how to do it without, you know, like, like an actor does. Action. Go. Action. You know, you can't, you can't just be like one of those artists that's like, I only do it when I'm in the mood. <laughs> Come on, got to do it on command. Now, mural, now. <laughs> Come on, monkey. <coughs> Get your little symb symbol out. Ching, 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 ching. Wind you up, let you go. <clears throat> you know, artist on demand. Like that's, those guys make money. Those are the ones doing it for a career. <laughs> those are the ones doing it for work. Like either they paint hella fast or they just, that's all they do. Yeah, it's all in your head. You just can't get it out. Well, don't, don't like, don't squish your head and, don't try to squish it or something. Don't squeeze it out. Sometimes I just have a hard time choosing what to do. Like I, I have too many ideas and I'm like, I don't know. So many ideas. I want to do this one and this one and this one. But is it worth doing? Is it going to be worth doing? Is it? Is that a, a worthy idea? You know? Like I, I think that a lot. I'm like, is that worth doing? Do I even want to like follow through with that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like that was a cool idea at first, but do I even want to finish it? <laughs> Your art stamina, stem stamina, stamina. I think it's just uh, you know. Hello, how's it going? I think you just need to, or I need what I need to do is you just get into that routine of doing it. Like you have to force yourself and it's like such a forceful thing sometimes like you literally have to just start cleaning up your space get it all organized and then put the paint in the palette once I put the paint in the palette I'm committed because I feel like it's a waste you know if I because I don't want to save it I made that I make a commitment to an hour and using all the paint so I only put as much paint in the palette as you know, maybe that would, that helps. That helps me commit to an hour and then commit to the paint that you've put in your palette until it's gone, you know, like paint until it's gone. And then when it's gone, you're done. You know what I mean? Like it's, I used to only be able to paint for like a half hour at a time or, or 45 minutes. Now I can paint for a solid hour and then I get a little like stale and I'm like, okay, I need to take a break. But I noticed that after an hour, like my brain starts to lose its focus and wander. So, you know, that that could be a really good thing to try. Is just try painting for an hour. Try painting for 10 minutes at a time. See what you can do in 10 minutes. Put it down. Leave it out. Cover your paint. You know, figure out a good way to get a Tupperware or something to cover your stuff so it doesn't dry out. And then come back to it. But the motivation is hard. But I think once you get going, that reward of like, the result of your idea like once you start to see it you're like oh, oh, oh you get excited to finish you know I think a lot of times we're not like we need something to push us into finishing and you know just posting a piece of work in you know a piece of art in progress you know can help a lot and I think in reminding people that you're on a journey of of like growth and discovery it's gonna be it's gonna keep getting better it's gonna keep changing and you're trying new things and you're you're pushing yourself to get better in a less amount of time so you know i think people recognize that that that's what you're doing and they want to commit to watching your your journey as an artist to getting better maybe i think i think that's a big part of it and at first it's always your friends and family and then it just turns into people you don't know. And and then they tell people and they tell people. But the one thing I heard today on that podcast was <clears throat> they were talking about haters. And they're, they're saying, like, 
like it's kind of like the restaurant business when when there's somebody oh well, i guess no it's not like the restaurant business but in the opposite way they were saying that when there's one hater there's like 10 people that probably really like you but they just don't say anything you know and they she keeps that in mind you know like if there's somebody saying some shit about you, but that only happens like when you got like thousands of people looking at your stuff, you know, like doesn't happen at first. But when you, when you get a bunch of likes on a post, you know, be happy about that. It's a, it's a good thing sometimes. And it helps, it encourages you to keep going, you know, and involving other people in your journey kind of gives you that, uh, it, like, uh, they, it holds you accountable. You know, like state your goals in art. Tell people where you're going with it, what you're trying to get to. And then and then like just by posting all the time, it holds you accountable. Like people want to see your progress. They want to see where it's going to go, you know. And then if you're always commenting on other people's art and recognizing that in them, then they'll recognize that in you. And so, like, if you want to get something out of social media, if you want to get something out of posting your art or your stories or your music, you have to give that thing. You have to find other artists and comment on their stuff. You have to find other musicians and tell them what you like about the song, what you like about the painting, about the composure, about the what you want other people to do for you. You have to go out and do it for them. So even if you don't have money to buy art, you you have what everybody has the ability to hit that share button the ability to share it into your stories into your timelines take a screenshot and tell other people you know that download their video repost it in your story like there's it's not that hard to do it's not that hard to go to somebody's timeline and make it their day repost all their art for one day in your stories those are going to disappear tomorrow why not just highlight one artist you know? Like if you there's something you want to get from other people, if you want people to see your shit, go look at their stuff, you know? it's I think that that's like a really big part of it. Every time I hear somebody talking about how they got successful, it's always because they recognized all the other people that were talented around them and tried to lift them up. It just seemed like it's like they all go together, you know? It's not a, it's not, an individual thing you have to raise each other up sorry I skipped over your comment how do you start painting like I have ideas I see what I want to do but I need days thinking about it and I want to start but I just can't and after about a week I only reach the point where I can start painting but then I can't stop in the painting for like 10 hours straight you can't stop so, so what's your problem <laughs> I don't see a problem there. Do you sketch it out first? Or you just go straight into it. Hey, whatever gets you there. Just remember that that's not the only way to get to it at the end of a painting. There's multiple ways. It doesn't have to just be one way that you get there. Like sometimes I just throw paint at the canvas and smear it around and then I end up seeing something on there. Sometimes I sketch it out like five different times before I transfer it. Sometimes I'll project it onto there i'll go uh, compose an image digitally or i'll go find a photograph and i'll project it and trace it and then paint it like it doesn't don't let that be the only way you get to the end of a painting like there's multiple ways to get there that you don't have to follow on one process you can explore processes and that's a great thing with looking at other people's art like how do they do it like a lot of people will go straight on with with like every color like color by numbers like people paint like that all the time and it drives me crazy. You know, like they, I mean, sure, they sketch it out, they get the image on there, but then it's just like color by numbers. There's no technique, there's no shading, there's, it's just like solid color next to solid color next to solid color. And they're just coloring in a little area. It's like color by numbers. And that works too, but like there's a million different techniques to get to the end of a painting. Like you could, you could, uh, stencil it on there you know there's just don't let it be your only way <clears throat> yeah you know and the thing that helps too like that thing that helped me a lot is coming up with characters like sometimes when i'm lost and i don't have direction in my art and i don't have ambition 
I'll go back to those two, like two or three characters that I've made, and I just work on them, and their in their little world and what they're doing, and maybe you know painting new painting of something they're doing, like an adventure that they're on. It really helps to like create a character, like, and then base everything around them, have them go on adventures, you know, and that's more of an illustrationist kind of aspect of it, like I think, because. With painting, it's more like there's concepts and there's visions and there's like, you know, subject matters that you can like just represent. Like, you know, when there's like fan art or something that somebody really likes or like a band logo or something like that. (coughs) That's always like, you know, something that people want. But I think just trying everything, look at everybody's technique, you know, figure out which one you like to do. The one I like to do is you do a solid color and then you you just kind of sketch the image out with white paint and then you go back with darker stuff and then you do washes of paint on top of the white and then you add more white on top of that and then you add more dark stuff and then you add more of the white and you just keep going back and forth between darks and lights and then washes of color and you get like these glowing, you get like a glowy effect. It's cool, like very soft glowy thing. But I mean, there's so many different ways to do it. You have to try everything to know what time of day is the best time to paint for you. You know, what time of like when is the best time to sketch? Like usually first thing in the morning, just sketching a few ideas out can like tell you if it's going to be a day to draw or paint or not. Like you have to find the like I was saying that yesterday, it's like a temperature gauge with artists. You have to find out just how much coffee, just how much weed you need, just how, what time of day is the best, you know, and then if you can schedule it, if you can get it in there, if like you're not busy doing something else, I think for a lot of people, it's good to just keep it out, just keep your shit out, if you don't have cats or kids, (laughs) and then, and then you can just reach over and just grab it, you don't have to set up too much, you just have to put paint in your palette, and then go, but another thing with painting it in intervals is p- try painting in just 15 minutes at a time or 10 minutes at a time and only use two colors. Like do all the dark stuff first. Like a lot of times it helps me because like doing that process is just like one color at a time or two colors at a time because then I'm not wasting a bunch of paint. I don't have like yellow and blue and orange and green. and I don't have a paint palette full of paint. And for an hour, I can just use these two colors and focus in on the detail and the values and not worry, worry about like all the different colors. Worry about that later and just get like the image down, you know, like render the whole thing in black and white and then add values to it. Add, I am mean, not value, but color. Like sometimes that's just way easier like if you're try doing something in just black and white do a whole painting complete it you know like all the shadows all the light stuff everything in black and white the whole painting and then add color at the end because it's so much faster (laughs) it's so much easier and it'll and you won't have to be like shading or blending black into your color or blending anything into your color, you know, you all your values are already there, and all you have to do is use light washes of color to fill out in stuff. It's so fucking easy. Uh, oh, okay. We'll see you later. Yeah, it's just, you know, like it just, it's that's one of the fun things about being an artist is you can find all the different processes to get to the end of the painting. You know, like sometimes you will paint to the music and you won't know what you're going to paint. It just comes out like this. And then sometimes you sketch it out first. Sometimes you have an idea. Sometimes you have no ideas and you just put paint on a canvas. That's all. That's all. (laughs) That's, that's it. Now go paint. Shut up and paint. Alrighty. Jeez. But don't lick your paint. I don't think that's good. I don't think you want to do that. (laughs) Don't lick it. You got your art farts back. (laughs) Nice. It feels so good and I forgot how much I love this place of pigments. Nom, 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 nom. These words are just feeling my... 
inspiration flow. I freaking appreciate the words. Oh, yeah, no problem. No problem. Why else am I here? <laughs> That's why I was put on this planet. To get more people to do art at this time. Maybe at some other time I'll get you to meditate. Or breathe. I'm painting. Do it right now. I I find that I have to. I have to be the like a sufficient amount of high. Like there's a different high I much I try to achieve. <clears throat> excuse me. When I play guitar, and then there's a different high I achieve, try to achieve when I paint. And I think the painting one is more caffeinated, and the the guitar one is more stoner. More stoner. <laughs> it's more weed, cause cause it just makes me all like silly and playful and like experimental and I already know how to play guitar like a bunch I'm not trying to figure things out I'm just like ooh, what's the sound like and then with painting it's like I need to be more hyper focused and like wired you know to like (laughs) grind it out (laughs) so like when I mix the two I get a little like I want to paint I want to smoke some more (laughs) Oh, I got an idea. Oh, but I just want to smoke some more weed. I'm not focused right now. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not caffeinated enough to get anything done. Uh, but you know, like I think it's just it fluctuates. It goes. Sometimes it just it's best when you have like that first cup of coffee and you smoke it and it's three in the morning and you just and nobody's bothering you and it's, <laughs> you're just listening to coast to coast or something and it's you're just into whatever you're doing <laughs> and you can just get into it you know i think it's it's nice when you can find something that you know like you play a whole album or you play you know like you put on a whole podcast and you just let that go all the way to the end. And you do stuff the whole time. So you could time yourself with the... Oh, it's done. I'm done painting. Take a break. You know? <laughs> like, uh, And it also helps you keep track of how many hours you put into a painting. So if you just paint an hour at a time, then you can like, put a little tally on the side. <laughs> One hour. Two hours. Three. This, And I know like this is only an hour. This painting is only an hour. Like, and I could tell you right now, like how many hours each painting is. This is only an hour. This is an hour painting right here. You know, I haven't done two hours on that yet. But like the, the witch one, the little witchy girl, that was like four hours. You know, so it, it's, it helps, you know, just painting in intervals. Then you know how long you spend on it. And then you don't have to. But if you're trying to get better, I'd say like paint all day if you can <laughs> you know take least amount of breaks as possible you know the you get better when you spend a lot of time on something you can master something really quick if you spend like 10 hours a day on something it is the perfect time to paint in the middle of the night when everyone's sleeping and just every, the world is quiet you know it's not a bunch of random thoughts flying around. <laughs> People's anxiety floating through the walls. <sighs> but I think it also has like a certain kind of like at 3 a.m. when you're like, when you're like doing something. It's like you're doing what you're not supposed to be doing kind of thing. There's like a mystical, I'm staying up late and I'm going to watch the sunrise and you know, like it's it's almost like you're a little kid doing what you're not supposed to do. I think that's why I like it so much because I'm like, oh, I'm going to stay up. I'm going to stay up all night. Like when I was a little kid, I wasn't really into staying up all night. But then I remember the first time I like was allowed to like I could just do whatever I wanted. Like my parents moved away when I was young and I was like, oh, I could do whatever I want. I don't have a time. I have to be home. <laughs> but like, you know, like it. I, whenever I get up super early or stay up really late, I always feel like I'm like being like I always feel like a little kid, like I'm getting away with something. <laughs> so it, 
So it kind of lends to that feeling of like I it lends to that feeling of like being a little kid just being all playful and like ooh what am I going to do what I, what can I do and and the other day when we were saying how how like it's nice to have quiet and nobody around like no roommates or anything like that but at the same time it's nice being like trying to be quiet and like be all like sneak around You're like ooh I'm doing something I'm not supposed to be doing or, you know, just trying to be courteous and quiet for the people you live with. But at the same time, it's like, I don't know, it's so weird. When they're not here, it's like this, such an empty feeling. Like, there's no, like, no humans here. It's, weird. it's a weird feeling. And then when there's people here, it's like, it's warm. There's like... There's this, there's more energy. It's weird because there's no neighbors and there's nobody else for like a long distance. So like you can really feel the energy of the house. And when there's no one else here, like it's easier to pick up on stuff that's like, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. Maybe paranormal or whatever. Like the other day, like something flew off the shelf and I was like, what the? F okay. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's one of my favorite things is going outside in the middle of the night here. It's like so magical. It's all the stars and the, it's so clear. Oh my God. But yeah, being up late is like, uh, there's this magical feeling that happens in the middle of the night. And if I can catch it just right, then I can ride that wave. It's like a creative wave of energy that comes through in the early hours. It's like around it's between 2.30 and 3.30 <laughs> here on the West Coast. It's probably like some kind of reset energy, uh, collective vibe of thousands and hundreds and thousands of humans like being reset while they sleep like puts out this shock wave or something and I catch it. If you're awake, you can catch it. There's all kinds of ideas in there. The Milky Way with the crack in it. The rift. The galactic rift. Have you seen the galactic rift? Oh, man. It's like a tear in the dome. Or a tear in the sky. I, I tried looking into it one time, and there are stars in it. It's just really dark. It's like a really dark area of the sky, and I always feel like it's some kind of rip oh in the winter months I love in the winter months because it's like that it's like it gets extended that that same feeling it's that same feeling of when you get to stay home from school or when it's raining out and you're like oh I'm gonna stay inside and do fun creative crafty things like craft day I'm gonna stay inside it's raining outside Ooh. Let's, let's drink some hot drinks and watch a movie and make some crafts. <laughs> I love that shit. <sighs> you know, I think, I think it's it. There's something about that rainy vibe, like up in Seattle, like it makes people more creative. Like we go inside and we get all creative. There's something I've always, I've always felt that way when I was a little kid, like. Oh, oh, we have to stay inside today? Oh, well, I guess I'm just going to have to draw all day long. <laughs> I'm just going to draw. 2 a.m. when I don't have to worry about waking anybody. That's most of my creative time. Yeah, you, you don't get in the way of anybody else's thing. I Sometimes, uh, like lately, i found... Some of my best guitar stuff is at 2 a.m. Like, but I don't ever get to play at that hour unless nobody's here. <laughs> I have a, if you ever watch any of my music videos or my, my guitar playing on the, on YouTube and you see the time stamp in the corner on the bottom and it says like 2 a.m. or 1 a.m. or something or like 3 a.m., those ones are always way better. <laughs> I don't know why. It's just something about the dark and the being up like, I'm way more musically creative.
but th- not every time, just sometimes. You got to figure out your, a schedule for wherever you're at. The best times to be creative. And if there is no time, then you got to make it all the time somehow. Always be drawing in a sketchbook or something. Yeah, music music is good at, at that hour. Man, I just wish I could play louder, but everybody's sleeping. But like some of the best recordings I have right now are all from from when from in between when they left and you showed up. I was playing like every night in the middle of the night and then when you left and then they came back, I was playing. I did it again. And I have a bunch of recordings from those two little breaks. And there's, yeah, there's just something about that golden hour of art. You know, maybe that's what you need to, the, painting, is Tiffany still, oh, she left. Maybe that's what she needs to, to try out, staying up late and creating in those silent hours. Like go outside and just soak up the night air and then go inside and just put it on the canvas. That could be it. Yeah, there's a bunch of really good ones lately. Um, there's one that was right before my birthday and then that one I think it's called Buzzed Acoustics that's when I drank that shot of tequila <laughs> that was pretty good guitar playing I was just all it's a totally you can tell that I'm like buzzed on something because it's not like my normal style I'm like whoa something else is happening here it's way more relaxed and then there was another jam that morning after that that was really good. And then on my birthday, that one was really good. And then just the other day, I like came up with like five songs in a row. That was like crazy. I just was like, oh, here's another song. Here's another song. Whoa, here's another one. Lately, they just keep coming to me like new arrangements, stuff I never tried before. It's like the same chords I've been playing all the time, but like for some reason I didn't realize to put those ones together. <laughs> like, like I, Oh, I could put a B with this, with an A seven. And it sounds like, why didn't I do that before? You know, that kind of shit. You're like, I have these two chords. I've been playing forever. Why didn't I put those together? <laughs> uh, Okie doke. Yeah. So, so, uh, you know, just, I think as an artist, the reason why we become, we get the art block, the reason why we become stagnant or like can't get motivated is because we want it to be meaningful. And if, you know what I mean? Like, and if it's just practice and if it's just repetition of doing the same thing over and over again, then that's not fun. And art should be fun, right? So I think what we really want is to try new stuff, you know, like to, and sometimes just getting new art supplies helps. But I think, I think that's it. You know, that's art block is that we just want to try new stuff and we want to like get over our own self-made hurdles, you know, like we're like, we've got to achieve stuff. And so I think the best way out of an art block might just be to set some goals to set to put and be like, I'm going to paint for an hour at a time or 10 minutes at a time, whatever it is, just set yourself, put a timer on, be like, I'm going to go straight through for this amount of time and then be done, you know? And then that commitment to how much paint you put in the palette, you're like, I will use all of that until it's gone, you know, that, and then try different methods, different processes, try sketching it first, try projecting it, try, dancing and painting at the same time try painting standing up try painting standing sitting down try you know painting in a way you've never done before like uh something i tried a while back that i really enjoyed was just like abstract just like have fun but then turn the canvas every like 10 minutes just turn it and then you're like whoa and then you start just getting in there some more and like and then you turn it again. And you're like, whoa, it kind of looks like this now. And never have a plan of what it's going to be. Like, never define it. 
completely. Just let it be what it is and see more stuff and follow the lines and add stuff and just enjoy all the different things that happen. And But keep turning the canvas like every f- few minutes, every 10 minutes, every whatever. Just keep turning the canvas until you've turned it every direction and you've painted on it while it's sitting in every direction. And that opens your brain to so many ideas. Like you start doing that and you're like, oh, I could do this. I could do that. Like I swear it works every time. Like if you get bored, just try putting on some really good music you like and do that technique and just stand up. Put it in an easel and stand up. Let the paint be right in front of you and move your arm around like you're dancing. Don't don't do this stuff. We get so like in the soup. That's what they told me in art school. They were like, you're in the soup. I was like, what do you mean? They're like, you're too close. You need to put your arm out this far, this far, and go like this, and like this. <laughs> Twirl it and spin it. That kind of stuff. Let Get your arms all, like let there be room around so you can, or try two brushes at the same time. I did that. That was great, man. That's a lot of fun, especially live. You get like two different colors going and then you just dance to the music. And I always thought it'd be a great idea to like come up with some Freddy Cougar gloves with brushes on the end of each finger and you could just. Now that would be awesome. Shut up and paint. <laughs>